Okay, so um, first of all, I am getting ready for a church service this afternoon at 3 p.m. Um, the Lord has been speaking in the most amazing way. And I have so much to share with you, but I was not allowed to share until I finished the back of my hair and the back is done. So I am to com continue getting ready, but in getting ready, um, I have been allowed. I'm doing this how the Lord tells me to do it. Um, and I have, am being allowed to share with you. So there are several things, several different things. And um, I'm just going to try to keep, I, I don't, you know what? I'm just going to follow the Lord's lead. So I will share as much or stop the video and do another video or, or however. Um, but I will do it as the Lord leads. So here's the first thing. Um, this is Psalm chapter 20. Uh, first, let me, well, yeah, let me read this first. Psalm chapter 20. Psalm chapter 20 says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of God, of the God of Jacob, defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Do it this way so I can see. Send thee help. And I'm reading for the King James, from the King James, by the way. I'm reading from the King James. I'm going to start over. Psalm chapter 20. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thine, all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. All right. So I love that part. Um, I was actually, what made me read that verse is because I was, or that chapter in Psalm is because as I was doing my hair, I was listening to scriptures about trusting in the Lord, trusting in the Lord. And what made me know that I need to do this video, I don't know if you all seen the video that I did and posted yesterday where I said I had saw something online. I didn't share what it was, but I had saw something online, a, a comment online. And basically the comment said, um, it, it, it had reference to now that we pray, now we need to act, now we need to do or, or something, something to that effect. And anyway, here's the deal. Here's the deal. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, without faith, without faith, faith is our simply our believing. It is impossible to please God well. Without faith, it is impossible to please God well. For we must believe that he is that's number one. There's two things, though. Not just believe that he is, but we must also believe that he is a rewarder to those who diligently, diligently. As a matter of fact, let me read it from the King James Version since I got the Bible right here. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number six. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can open it, but I'm recording right now. Um, so sorry about that. <laughs> so, so it's not enough to believe in God. 
it's not enough. You have to also believe that he is a rewarder. And so that, that post that I saw where the comment basically was made, you know, it's, it's not enough to pray. We got to act too. We got to go out and act. Well, here's the deal. Because remember, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every matter be firmly established, right? So God gives me these witnesses. He shared with me these witnesses that I shared um, in the video I did yesterday. Yesterday, I shared about King Saul. And how, how he pushed ahead. And because he pushed ahead, he ended up losing the kingdom. I also shared about David and how David um, went and counted the people, right? But he did that because God was angry with the people. Why? Because they pushed ahead. They entered into a covenant with the nation of the Gibeonites. And they weren't supposed to because they pushed ahead. Well, today, okay, so the video I did yesterday was the video I did yesterday, right? And so I'm not even thinking about that. God showed me some other stuff that I'm excited to share with you too. But then he brings this to me. Sarah, okay? Sarah is one who pushed ahead too. I don't know if I mentioned her yesterday, but I'm going to mention her today. Now, Sarah believed in God. She did. She believed in God. But when God said to Sarah, and, and Abraham, basically, that you would have a child, Sarah added her two cents to it. And what she did was she made things worse by adding her two cents to it. How did she add her two cents? She told Abraham, well, you go have sex with, with Hagar and have a baby with Hagar and we, and we could raise this baby as our own. Well, that's not what God said. So in other words, when you push ahead, when you don't trust in God, you're basically saying to God, you know, I believe in you, but I don't believe that you can handle this situation. I believe in you, but I don't believe that you can do the things that you're saying that 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 like I, I'm I'm saying you could do it, but I think you need my help, right, right? And that's incorrect. That is incorrect. So the scripture says in Psalm chapter twenty that we just read, it was verse number seven. It says, "Some trust in horses." And some trust and shares. I'm trying to turn back to it real quick. Psalm chapter 20, verse number 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. So listen, you we have faith. And oh, and that's the other thing. In the book of James, chapter 2, it says the demons believe in God. So because you believe in God, because a lot of people get offended when they say, you know, you don't trust God. And they get offended about that. I do believe in God. I do trust God. Do you trust God? Do you for real trust God? Because if you trusted God, you would get out the way and let him do it. Because he is God and God all by himself. When we add stuff to it, we make things worse. I had to learn that the hard way. I learned that the hard way. I learned that the hard way. When you add stuff to it, you make stuff worse. He got it. And I have to believe, and so that's what Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 say, when it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God well. But there's two things that, that is mentioned, right? The two things that is mentioned, is, it says you must believe that he is, and we do. We believe that God is. We, none of us can deny him. We don't even want to. But it also says, and that he is the rewarder rewarded that he has a reward that he will answer you in other words you got to believe that it says that he is the reward of those who diligently seek him so the one who is diligently seeking him of course is the one who is praying so yes you are praying right but when you believe that he is a rewarder that means you believe that he's going to answer your prayers you believe that he's going to do it and you're going to trust him and wait on him and watch for him that's what these songs about i'm gonna trust in you i'm gonna trust in you I trust in your goodness. Y'all heard the song. I don't I don't know who, who made it or however, but but that's what these songs are about. Some of them. Some of that's what these songs have been about. Trust in our God. Um uh uh Juanita Biden. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. The problem is, 
It is hard. We are human. And it is hard for us to wait. It is hard for us to be still. Again, I am a living witness of that. It is hard for us to be still. I can't be still. I'm just going to keep that real. It's hard for me to be still. So I am always moving. Always doing stuff. The only time I'm still is when I have a Bible in front of me. Other than that, it's hard for me to be still also. So with that being said, what we fight the work that we have to do is not our adding to it. It's not our going out now and trying to fix things. We don't pray to God, now let us go out and try to fix things. That's not the work that we're supposed to do. The work that we have to do is to now fight ourselves. We don't fight. See, God's word said that our warfare is not against flesh and blood, so we're not fighting anybody else. We're not. Our warfare is to keep still, stand still. That's what it meant in in, in Ephesians um, chapter 6 where it talked about putting on the complete suit of armor. And it said after you have done all that you can, it says stand. And, and, and it says more than once. It says stand. There was an emphasis on that. As a matter of fact, let me turn to that. I've already went over the 10-minute mark, so I know what that means. So let me go ahead and, and grab this scripture. This is Ephesians chapter 6. I mean chapter, uh, yeah, chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And it is verse number 13. It says, Wherefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. This is the King James Version. Take up the, so what is it that, what is the all that you were supposed to do? The all you were supposed to do was to take up the complete sword of armor. So you had to make sure that you got your loins girded with truth. You had to make sure that you got your breastplate of righteousness on, that your feet are shod with the good, the preparation of the gospel of peace, that your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That means that you have been in the presence of the Lord and you have gotten the gospel, the good news, the word, and you're ready with it. Your feet are shod with it. It says, um, Oh, uh, it says, wherefore, I mean, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So again, back in verse 13, it says, wherefore, take upon you unto you the whole armor of God. That's what you're supposed to do. And having done all, it says to stand. Once you are girded, once you have your complete suit of armor on, you are girded, then you're ready. Then you're ready. Then you're ready for battle. And, and who you're battling is yourself to stand. Just stand in position no matter what's coming at you. Stand and wait on the Lord because you're trusting the Lord. He says the battle is mine. That's what he's saying. He didn't say it was yours. He said the battle is his. So with that being said, and now I done got into this and I done went above. And I'm going to share, be sharing on this more and more because this today has been just absolutely amazing to me. And the things that God has showed me and shared with me. So so um, here's the other two. Here's the second thing. Let me get my comb. Okay, so here's the second thing. So I have been yesterday talking about these powerless disciples, right? In Mark chapter nine, Mark chapter nine. Um, I had skipped over the first part, which is the transfiguration, which is in Mark chapter nine, where Jesus had went into the mountains and he had three with him, right? He had Peter, James, and John with him, but the other nine were not with him, right? So the other nine, they were out and, and when Peter, James, and John is coming back from that amazing experience, they come up on this spectacle and what they see is the other nine, um, like going through the, the, the teachers of the law was there, which means the Sadducees and Pharisees, they, they were there, you know, and, and there's an argument that is going on. And so Jesus, he's like, what's going on? So the father of this young boy comes up to uh, Jesus and he says, I brought my son to you. But they couldn't heal him, right? And so Jesus is like, oh, you little faith, how much longer do I have to deal with y'all? <laughs> but he wasn't talking about the father. He was really talking about them disciples. How much longer do I have to deal with y'all? Why? Here's the problem. Here's the issue. The, the disciples 
were given power, right? You'll see that, um, I can't remember what chapter it was offhand, but uh, they were given power by Jesus and they were sent out. They had the power to cure sicknesses. They had the power to heal diseases. They had the power to cast out demonic spirits, right? And so later on in Luke chapter 10, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus gave this same power after he had uh, ordained the, the apostles. He had gave the same power to 70 other disciples. Okay. I mean, not 70, 40, 40 or 70. It was 40 or 70. I think it was 40, but um, it's Luke chapter 10. So you go look, you go look. I'm just saying it was more than the 12 that had this power. Okay. So the, the, the number that he had gave it to the second time, they came back and they were excited. Right. And they were like, even the demons are, or are bowing down to us. You know, they're there. You know, when we speak in your name, they're doing this, that and the other. Right. And Jesus said to them, he said, don't be, don't rejoice over the fact that the demons are, um, Listen to you. Don't don't rejoice over this. Rejoice over the fact that your name is written in heaven, right? So now I was just going over this stuff yesterday. So here's the deal. Here's here's the deal with that and with these nine powers. Because because those nine going back to Mark chapter nine with those those nine powerless disciples. Here's the deal with that. Um, they after everything was said and done, and Jesus healed this boy completely. Healed this boy. Jesus goes. He enters, goes back into the house, basically, and they go in with him. And so privately, they ask him, these nine, right? They ask him, why is it that we could not heal this boy? Jesus said to them, some things you cannot get rid of except through prayer and fasting. Some things you cannot get rid of except through prayer and fasting. Okay, so... Fast forward. I've been looking at this for a while. I've been talking about this with these powerless disciples, right? And here's the deal. We're walking around here today powerless and we shouldn't be because we don't understand. And then we think that the fasting is about not eating food. But Jesus said that it's not the food that will condemn or save you. He said when you eat the food, it passes through your intestines and you basically poop it out. He said it's not what goes in your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you because what comes out of your mouth comes from the recesses of your heart, right? So with that being said, again, we're talking about the powerless disciples. Why were they powerless? Here's what was going on. They was not getting in the presence of the Lord. That's why they was proud. Every morning, every day, like when you read through the gospel accounts, when you read through the gospel accounts, you will find that every single day, Jesus got up and he stole, he got up early and he stole away from them disciples. He, he, he went off from them. And the reason that he did that is because he went to go get into the presence of his heavenly father, whose work, it was his will to do. You understand? Jesus' work was to do the will of the Father. He said he says that, right? So every morning he got in and when the disciples got up, they would go and they would find him and then they would go about their day, right? And then there was sometimes, like for instance, when Jesus, um, when they, I guess it was the Sermon on the Mount, and he did the, um, he probably did some healing too because he was always healing the people, but he fed them. And so anyway, he sends them off. He sends the disciples off. And he tells them, go ahead on. And he went up into the mountains to pray. He went up to refill. He went up to refresh. We don't do that today. So it's, I, I say we because we're as a whole, as a body, we're all a part of one body, right? But we don't do that today. We don't take that moment to refresh. In our mentality, okay, and I, I'm saying it because I've seen it done. In our mentality, refreshing is after like, and, and so this is where I'm talking to leaders. I'm talking to those who are leaders. I'm talking to those who are princes because that's what you are. You're princes. I'm talking to the leaders. I'm talking to the ministers. Our idea of refreshing is let me go get some food. Let me kick back and chill with my family. I'm going to sit back on the couch and I'm going to watch some TV. 
But but and so what happens is for real, for real, we have not refreshed. We rested our phys our fleshly body, but we have not refreshed. Because here's the deal: the power, the anointing comes from God. It's not us. It's not us. It's not you, leader. It's not you, pastor. It's not you, apostle. And, and, and it's not you. The power comes from God. And so you have to get into the presence of God. Just like, for instance, when you when you guys are preparing for your sermons, preparing what you're going to speak to the, the people, you do get into the presence of God. That's what y'all do. You go and you take some time off and you get into that word and you prepare how you're going to share. You read over the word and you prepare how you're going to share it. And so that's why when you share it, you so drain the empty afterwards because you allow God to use you. You might have prepared, but the preparing was about you getting this word into your Self first. That's that message. I still haven't done that message or shared that message where God says, um, or He's showing through the scripture that we, He got to fix us first. See, we're broken. All of us is broken. All of us. All of us. Just because you have a title does not make you any better than the next person. It makes you more accountable. You said to God, yes, you can use my vessel. You can use me. I want to be a vessel of noble purposes because he gives us the choice because he, he, he created all of us. He created all of us, every last one of us for his purpose. Even the wicked for the evil day, the scripture says that. He created all of us, not just the pastors, not just the Christians. He created every single human being on the face of this earth has God's breath in him. Every human being. And we all are created for God's purpose. All of us, even the wicked for the evil day is created for God's purpose. He loves every single last one of us. Um, I got to I got to go. I got to take this message. I will be back. OK, so I already don't I'm going to be piecing this video together. Um, what I last left off talking about was powerless disciples powerless disciples and why it was that they were powerless those nine was powerless back then and why it is that there is um what many are powerless now powerless healing should be see see god's word said to those who believe that signs miracles and wonders will follow you will follow you. There is no reason for the miracles that was being done in the book of Acts, people getting healed, set free and delivered. There's no reason for that not to be happening. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Jesus said that he will be backing us up in Mark chapter 16, right? He's like, I'm with you. I'm with you all the days. He said, he said, I'm backing you up. With signs and miracles and wonders. Go read that. Mark chapter 16 is like the very last verse. The very last two verses probably. Go read that. But anyway, the, the disciples did not have power. And the reason why they did not have power to cast out that demon out of that boy. Jesus said, because some things you can't get rid of except for through prayer and fasting. But the people don't understand that today. They don't understand that the fasting means that you get in the word of God, that you seek his word. It's not enough to read it and quote scriptures. You have to believe it. You have to trust in God. You have to trust him and believe him. And when you trust his word, you won't be in fear of nothing, of nothing. You won't be worried about nothing. He said he got it. And when you trust him, you will you will be still and you will wait on him and you will wait to see his goodness because the power does not come from us. That's a, the power doesn't come from us. It is God's. It is God. So Jesus says, yes, Jesus says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom and what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. But understand this. Will the keys be given to babies with something this powerful? Now, now look, 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 look. There's some people out here who are really, really wealthy. And because of their wealth, they're able to go out and buy all these cars and stuff. And, and they're storing up this wealth for their children, right? But will a person, will an adult give a baby access to something that a baby cannot handle? 
Well, as an adult, you love your child and you want to buy, like most fathers, most fathers, they love, their desire is to be able to buy their child a car, okay? Will you buy a baby a car and give a baby a keys, the keys to a car if the baby does not know how to take care of and properly handle that vehicle? Would you do that? There's a there's this um, post I seen a while ago. This saying I think it was a post I seen a while ago. It said guns don't kill, people kill. Guns don't kill, people kill. Well, guns ain't the only thing that kills. Vehicles kill too. Cars kill too. You understand? If you gave a baby the keys to the car and the baby went out and got in that car and drove it and don't know how to drive it and end up hitting somebody, that person will die. As a matter of fact, I think I seen um, something like that happened in the news. And this person that was drunk driving, this this young boy, but because his family was rich, they basically got him off of that and they used, they, he wasn't charged with it. And what they used was the disability. This boy had a disability basically. And what his disability was, is that nobody told him no. Nobody says no to him because he's rich. His family is so rich that nobody says no to him. They give him whatever he wants. So he goes out and he, he got this car, you know, this little rich kid. He got this car and he's driving this car and he goes out and he's drunken driving and he caused the accident in his drunken driving that killed some people and he got away with it basically. <laughs> Y'all know where we're going with that, right? You, you would not give somebody keys to something that they don't know how to handle and when you do give them keys to something you expect them to take care of whatever you have given them keys to right right amen we're on the same page with that i think we are <laughs> i think we are we're on the same page with that so here's the deal yes jesus promises us he, he says i give you keys keys right um, and what you bind on earth is bound in heaven and what you loose on earth, earth is loosed in heaven. But here's the deal. We have some people going off, you know, and, and because we read that and, and we're told, you know, you could just say that. So now we go out and we, we treat God like he's a genie in a bottle. And, and we use Jesus name like that too. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of because because the scripture says at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Right. So check this out. Check this out because again, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, right? So you have these, these young men who call the sons of Sceva. And so they were going out and they were doing some miraculous works and everything and healing in the name of Jesus. Because they knew to say in the name of Jesus, right? So apparently it was this guy and this guy had um, a demon on him. And so these sons of Sceva, they go out and they get to, you know, in, in the name of Jesus, yada, 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 this, that, and the other come out, yada, yada. So but check out what happens. Did the demon come out of this man? Out of him, kind of, maybe. He spoke. He, 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 he spoke. They, they called him up. They conjured him up, uh, if you want to say it that way. Um, but did he, he come out as far as to be cast out? No. So let me tell you what happened. This demon speaks, and he speaks to them sons of Sceva. And he says to them, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who is you? And he whooped them and whooped them on. And, and so these sons of Sceva was not able to. They were powerless, basically. They were powerless. Why? Because it was all about words. It was all about themselves. And what they did not understand is this. The power comes from the Lord. How do you get this power? How do you refresh in this power? By dwelling in the presence of the Lord. That means, and, and to dwell is not to sit and read a verse, learn a verse, memorize a verse, talk about this one particular verse, and now you think you're full of power. No, you got to get before the Lord and let him work you first. 
because the sword, he says that anybody who, who lives by the sword would die by the sword. That's what the scriptures say, right? Anybody who lives by the sword would die by the sword. And we know that to be true even when it comes to weapons. If you want to yield a weapon, you might end up getting killed by that very weapon that you're yielding or somebody else with a weapon too. But that's the same thing with the Bible too. The Bible is the word of God. It's a sword and it is a two-edged sword. So therefore, anybody that is going to go forth and call themselves, even like doing what I'm doing as far as speaking God's word and thus says the Lord and it says this, 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 and this. And I'm talking about myself included. Um, Y'all seen the videos that I've done. And what is it? what happens is that word, it has to get in me first. I'm going to use myself. It has to get in me first. If you're wielding it, it has to get in you first. It has to get in you. You got to understand it. You got to believe it. You are accountable for it. You have to apply it and walk in it, not just quote it. You have to apply it and walk in it. It will cut you first in such a way that you are now in a position to be able to go forth with this very same word and convince somebody else and rebuke and exhort. That was the command that we were given as soldiers of Christ to, to go out when we're going out and we're dealing with somebody else. And that, that's kind of part of touching on what I had wanted to share the other day that I kind of shared in part about how God has to work with me first, with me first. He has to work before, before I can relate, before I can be in a relationship, before I can talk to or minister to somebody else. I have to let God work in me first. Otherwise, there is no power. I have to be still and let God fill me up. When you have a cup, when you have a cup and, and the cup is empty and you want some juice in that cup all day long, unless you fill that cup up, unless that cup is, is in a position where it could be filled, you ain't going to drink no juice out that cup. To do it, I, it, so you, you have to get still. Just like a cup, you have to get still. And you have to allow the Lord to fill you up first. But just because you've memorized a few scriptures doesn't mean he has filled you. And so in your emptiness, how can you fill somebody else? You have no power. You have no power. The power is not about us. It's not about me. It's not about you, minister, preacher, apostle, bishop. It's not about you. So that takes me now to Moses. Moses, who God talked to face to face. Moses, who was full. When Moses came down out the mountain after being in the presence of the Lord, the scripture says that his face was lit. They had to cover his face with a veil because he was shining so bright when he came after being in the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you what happened with Moses. After a while, the people, with all that complaining that the people was doing, kind of wore Moses down. And they got to this one part where Moses, um, instead of him continuing like he had always done, he had always pointed the people to the Lord, always. But on this one particular occasion, when God told him to speak, he spoke and he struck a rock. He was like, show Moses. And I, and I thought, you know, like, it's about him. It wasn't about him striking the rock. Like, all this time, as many times as I have went over that verse, all this time, I figured, you know, what well, he was just supposed to speak to the rock. He wasn't supposed to speak and strike the rock. You know, he was just supposed to. Because before the first time that he did it, God had him strike the rock, right? But this time, God told him to speak to it. So he spoke and struck. And, and, and although the people got water, God told Moses, because of what you did, because of how you did it, because of what you did, you can't go into the promised land. And so for that reason, like I have been ordained. Yes, I yes, like yes, I am ordained. Yes, 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 yes. But I don't walk in that. I don't call myself no pastor or anything. And I don't like tell anybody to do that. People have lately been doing that, I guess, because of all the stuff that they hear me saying or however, but I don't like pick any of that up. I'm not touching nothing until God says do it. I'm not touching none of that. But I mention that to say this. The reason why, even though back in 2013, I think it was, or 2014, when I was ordained as such, the reason why I didn't, like, go around and, okay, call me this and you don't see me. I got, I just saw the collar the other day the, on, the, on the shelf, and, and I thought about throwing it away. Like, and it was like, no, nah, I just leave it up there. And um, 
the reason why I didn't touch any of that, you know, to walk in that even after it happening. And people was questioning that, you know, and they was like, you know, why are you not opening no church? Why are you not doing it? And I'm going to tell you why. I always say it because I did not want the people to do to me what happened to Moses. I didn't want that. Like, like I want God's promises. And so I refuse until God says, you know, I refuse. And so now this is what I'm understanding what happened. This is this this is something that happened today, this morning. It was so amazing when God showed me that it just blew me away. And it's gonna take me back to them 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 nan in a second. But I want to share this with you. It 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 was about what Moses said. It was about what he said. He said when he spoke, because he did speak, God told him to speak to the rock and to strike to speak to the rock. He didn't tell him to strike it. He told him to speak to it, but he spoke and he struck the rock. But what he said is, shall Aaron and I bring water from this rock for you? He took credit for something that was not his. And that is what, oh we, I'm going to have to calm myself down. That is what upset God. He took credit. The power belongs to God. The power, your your action, your work is to contain yourself and be still, not to reach out and touch somebody else. It's to contain you, be still, and to trust in the Lord. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. And every single time that you don't do that, see, he even tells us in Proverbs, we know that scripture, lean not unto your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That's what it says. In all your ways and everything, acknowledge God. Why? Because the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. It's not ours. We're supposed to be still. But this world is telling us different. This world is telling us, you're doing all that praying. You're doing all that talking. You need to do some acting. Yeah, but they're not telling us the type of acting. <laughs> They're not telling us the type of acting. They're not telling us you need to trust the Lord. Now that you've prayed, you need to be still and believe that the Lord is going to fix it, that the Lord got it, that the Lord is going to do it. You need to not put your two cents in it. <laughs> the world is not telling us that. The world is trying to make those of us who are trusting in God look crazy. But the scriptures say that those of us who trust in the Lord, we would not be disappointed. The scripture said the name of the Lord is a strong tower through which the righteous run and is given protection. He says that he will protect us. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You have the example of the three Hebrew boys who trusted God, who went into the fire with God. I mean, who went into the fire and, and, and there was an angel in there with him. God protected them through that. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you believe this? With all the stuff that is going on in this world today, Jesus says to the believers, even with, now we're going to talk about death for a second. We're going we, we, we're gonna to talk about that in sickness. He says this sickness is not with death is its purpose, but Lazarus did die. But there was a reason, there was a purpose for that. And, and Jesus said death was not the purpose. So he said that um, it was for the glory of God that the son might be glorified through it. And what happened? Jesus raised Lazarus to the dead. But before any of that happened, those who supposedly had faith in him, did they really have faith? Nope. Did they trust him? No. They believed him. They knew he was able. But when he didn't do it, how they thought it should be done, they had whole attitudes. Did Mary, Mary had a whole attitude. She had a whole attitude. When Jesus came in. And, and she knew he had come in. She didn't get up to go meet Jesus. Martha did, but she didn't. She had a whole attitude. You wasn't even at the funeral. For real. You let my brother die. For real. And that's what's happening today. People are not trusting God. You can, you can, you can quote scriptures all day long. You can talk about God all day long. But until you dwell in that presence. Until you realize that the power is not yours. It is God's. So anyway, earlier today is a lot of this, and I think I might have missed something, but I just had to get this out. But earlier today is a lot of this was being poured into me as I was before the presence of the Lord. This is something that, something a little extra that was shared with me. 
out of those 12 disciples, how many wrote books? How many? How many books are contained in the Holy Scriptures? Out of the 12 disciples, think about it. Out of the 12 disciples, think about it. How many wrote books? Peter, let me help you. You ain't even got to guess. Peter, James, and John. Three. Peter, James, and John. Out of the 12, Peter, James, and John, that means there was nine others, right? Peter, James, and John is the same three that was always with Jesus, always in his face, always in his presence. Peter, James, and John. Peter, his book tells us about like, like if you're going through any type of persecution, if you're going through any type of persecution, his books, first and second Peter, because he wrote two. His books is the one that will encourage you and help you to be strong and to stand and to overcome in the face of persecution. His books. James is the one who, he only wrote one book, but he's the one who told us to count it all joy when you go through various trials, knowing that the work of your patience, and let's say something else, I, I, I got Bible in front of me, but I got to finish my hair because I got uh, places to be. But but his but he he's also the one that told us to resist, resist the devil, and the devil will flee. He says, submit yourself to the Lord and resist the devil, and the devil will flee. He said he also let us know that our mouth. <laughs> he said that our mouth gets us into trouble. Basically, you gotta go look it. He's the one. James is the one that let us know that there is no one sin that's greater than another. James is the one. He let us know that, okay, so you believe in God? That's good. You believe in God. But the demons believe too. And they shut up. So you need to have more than believing in God. And and um, then you have John. You got the uh, book of John, the gospel of John, where he lets us know that uh, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. He was God. He he tells us about Jesus in the most amazing way gives us he's the one that gives us that prayer that that beautiful prayer in John chapter 17 that Jesus prayed for us he's the one that let us know that that it's not about us again he said he said that Jesus said you didn't choose me I chose you and I called you to bear good fruit that power comes from Jesus John is also the one who wrote the three letters in the back First John, second John, third John, the one about loving, first John about loving our brothers and sisters, loving them for real, loving them. Second John, where he tells us to not push ahead of the Lord. Second John chapter one, verse nine, third John, I can't remember, what, um, but there's the book of third John. And then he wrote Revelation. He was the one that while he was in prison, he was caught up into heaven. And, and that book is being fulfilled now. Oh my gosh. But these Peter, James, and John, those are the three who was in the um was there when Jesus went through the transfiguration in Mark chapter 9. They were the three that was there when Jesus went to raise that girl that had died. And everybody was like, Oh, she's dead now. And and Jesus wouldn't let nobody go in with him except for those three. Except for those those three. They were the ones that was there. Um, let's see what, what other occasions where they were, there's, there's so you gotta go look it up. You gotta go look it up. I'm getting distracted now. I'm getting distracted now. But, um, what I want to share with you is that they would, oh, I, I don't know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. They were the ones that Jesus took with them. Now he took all, all of the disciples with him to the garden of Gethsemane. But right before he died, but when he went off to pray, he took the three with him and they went in deeper to deeper into this garden. And then it, the scripture says he went off a stone's throw from them. He told them, stay awake and pray with me. Right. He went off a stone's throw. Pick up a stone. I've been telling people, pick up a stone and throw it. That way you can see how far away Jesus was from them three. He picked up a, a, it says he was a stone's throw away from them. And every time he kept coming back, they would sleep. Every time. 
Um, and I mentioned that to you about these three that was closest because these were the ones that like they were so full of the spirit and they they, they had power. They they were able to like these books that they wrote that strengthens us, encourages us, that we look to, that we read. It's because they had power. But the other three, what was the problem? They were relying on their own strength. They were relying on their own power. And so I'm telling you this, hopefully to encourage you. Oh, I keep dropping this. Hopefully to encourage you. Because that power, that strength is for all of us. It's for all of us. It's not just for no title. It is for all of us. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. But if you're operating in your own strength, you will not have power. You will not because the power comes from Jesus. You got to get no matter what it is you're doing. He said he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That's what he wants for you. He wants you to have an abundant life. He wants you to enjoy wholeness and, and health, wealth and, and like to be prosperous in in all areas of your life. He is our supplier. Okay, he is. He is our supplier. Your power, your strength, your ability. The scriptures say I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ. But you got to get in his presence. It's just like the instance, the cars that we drive, right? When the cars are low on gas, what do you do? You take it to a gas station and you fill it back up. Why? So that it will have the power to be able to do whatever you want it to do or to be able to take you wherever you need to be taken. And so because of that, because of that, just like you would go to the gas station and fill your car up, Get in the presence of the Lord. How you do it is how you do it. I didn't say go to church. I said get in the presence of the Lord. The scripture says to trust the Lord. Not to trust in princes. Not to trust in horses and chariots. But to trust in the Lord. Get in the presence of the Lord. How you do it. It's not going to look the same for everybody. But however you do it, that's where your power is. And remember, it's not about you. Because when you start making it about you, you will have lost the pleasure of our father. You will have lost his approval. He can't trust you if you're making it about you. All the glory, all the honor goes to our heavenly father. The power is his, not ours. Not ours. You want to be used by the Lord? He wants to use you. <laughs> he wants to, He created you for that purpose. He wants to use you. He wants to use you. But can he trust you with all that he wants to do through you? Can he trust you? It's not about you. It's not about um, you getting no glory out of it because it's not about you. Period. Jesus said, if he be lifted up, that's what we're supposed to do. Okay, so they go another work. They go another work. What is that work? We're to lift up Jesus, lift up the Lord. We are nobody's savior. He is. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. That needs to happen. Why? Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend and every tongue shall confess Jesus as Lord. That has to happen. It has to happen. Can he trust us? Can he trust us? And so the issue today is that there's a lot of people in these various positions that have been incorrectly taught. So they went in and they got these positions, not even realizing, and, and they think it's all about what I say. You know, when, when people start responding to the words you say, you know, and, and, and it just like, like swells the head up, you know. <laughs> but that's one of those things that we have to battle. We got to battle that spirit of pride. We have to. And the enemy knows that about us, that we could be prideful people. And so those things will happen. But Jesus tells us to pray that we do not fall into temptation. Why? Because we got all these various spirits that we need to battle that will come at us. Look, look, Jesus said that that 
um, we are no greater than our master. If they treated the master that way, that's going to happen to us. So check out what, what Satan did. He tempted, he tried to tempt Jesus. He tried to tempt Jesus and, and three times. Uh, if you are the son of God, you know, if you are the son of God, turn these, these uh, rocks into bread. If you are the son of God, throw yourself over a cliff for it is. And then he started quoting scripture. <laughs> then Satan started quoting scripture, you know, throw yourself over a cliff. If you're a son of God, throw yourself down, throw yourself over a cliff because it is written that the angels were like, like, oh my gosh, you know, um, and then that last one, I give you all this, that, and the other. I give you all the riches and all the power and all the kingdom. You know, and, and Jesus is like, uh-uh. <laughs> if you bow down, if you do bow down and do one act, not several. He said one, just one, just one. I give you this if you bow down and do so. So we're told to not love money, you know, not chase after money. It's all there. It's all in the scriptures. It's all in the scriptures. It is all there. And so I, I really just want to encourage you to examine yourself, examine yourself and examine, do you really trust God? Do you really trust God? Are you exhausted and tired? Is, is the ministry tiring for you now? Are you exhausted in what you do? Trust God. Because if you're exhausted, that's because you're working. That's because Jesus said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and, heavy laden and burdened down. He said, take my yoke upon you because my yoke is mild and light or, or light. or but Anyway, he tells us, we're told in the book of James, I think, to throw our burdens. Or somewhere in the book, we're told to throw our burdens on the Lord. Cast our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. We don't have to carry any of this stuff. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us to enter into God's rest. And it says that those who don't are disobedient. And there's going to come a time if you don't, that you're not going to be able to. Those, those who died in the wilderness, like go read that Hebrews chapter three and chapter four. He called them disobedient. They were supposed to have been in his rest. But they didn't. They was trying to do everything themselves. Go read it. Go read it. Go check it out. Like, as I'm the more and more that I'm understanding this stuff, it is just blowing me away. And I'm asking of the Lord for myself that I never, ever, 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 ever forget this. The power is his. It's not mine. All I have to do is trust him. That's it. Lift him up. But I'm not, I don't have to carry nobody, 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 except to carry them to the Lord. I don't have to carry nobody. I can't even carry my own weight. How can I carry somebody else's weight? <laughs> you, you feel me? You have to trust the Lord. He did it. He paid the price for all of us. He's the one that can heal. He's the one that can deliver. He's the one that has the answer. Either you're going to believe him or not. But do you believe the Lord because you were programmed to say you believe the Lord? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Because when you, there's some people who actually are being honest. That's why the Christians don't like the world so much. Because the world is just honest. They don't believe. They don't believe in God. And they're just going to say, look, I don't believe. You know, I, I, you have not convinced me. I don't believe. And the world do, I mean, the church do not like that. They do not like that they don't understand it whereas the church has been programmed to say and that's one of the reasons why the world don't, don't believe and i'm about to share this with you too the church has been programmed to say that they believe in the lord but they're acting like they don't and that is one of the reasons why the world don't want to have, have nothing to do with the church because they like y'all a bunch of hypocrites y'all a bunch of lies because for real for real y'all don't believe either because if you did you wouldn't be acting the way you're doing I'm just saying, I'm just saying, sit back and look at it. Look at it. God says we, we have the opportunity now to examine ourselves. And then as we do and we see areas where we had not been trusting in the Lord, this is what he says. He says, come to me and lay, lay, your, lay the matter straight. Let's put it on the table. He said, your sins are red as scarlet, but I make them white as snow. He says that he wants to cleanse us. He want, That's why he says, if my people who are called by my name, 
you calling yourself Christian. And well, if that's the case, if you call by my name, if you will humble yourself, we got an issue of pride. We got too much pride and that pride will get us in trouble. We need the Lord, but we walking around here trying to do everything ourselves. I got this. I got it. I get, I got it. I don't need no help. I got it. I got it. And we messing up with that. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, realize that you do need him. You don't have to carry the burden. You tired? Then call out to the Lord. Get your burden to him. You don't have to carry it. You're carrying it because you want to. You carrying it because you want to. Give it to him. He said if they will if, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. That means you're gonna now after you done prayed, you're not about to now go yourself or pick it back up. You're not gonna sit there and ask the Lord, okay, so what do I do next? And that means you're gonna listen for him to give you the answer. And when he gives you the answer, it says, and turn from your wicked ways. God says, then. I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. He wants to heal us. But again, if a baby is not ready for a car, why would he give us such power and we not ready to handle it? Meaning that we'll get big headed. It, it'll become all about us and we'll end up losing his favor. That's not what he wants for us. He wants us to trust him. Do you trust him? Trust him. All right, so I'm almost finished, but now I got, I mean, I'm, I'm almost finished with my hair, but now I want to really focus on getting my hair done. The majority of what I said is uh, what I needed to share, and I will be sharing this a lot more, more detailed, um, more snippets, actual scriptures, but I kind of just needed to get that out for right now. And um, so it is what it is. Y'all have a blessed rest of your day. I got to go. All right, bye. <laughs>